President Trump started out by praising Fox and Friends as the best and most highly rated political morning show before unloading on its rivals. At MSNBC, he tweeted, Morning Psycho Joe, who helped get me elected in 2016 by having me on free all the time, has nosedive. Too angry, dumb, and sick. A really bad show with low ratings. Joe Scarborough seemed to revel in the free publicity. He called me dumb and sick. Well. Talked really about our poor ratings. And I think this is like the second or third year in a row that we've had record ratings. They just keep going up more and more. And we thank the president for drawing everybody's attention to it. As for CNN, Trump said the network was a ratings disaster and it rewarded Chris Cuomo with a now unsuccessful prime time slot despite his massive failure in the morning, only on CNN. Uh, Cuomo used his third place ratings to make a point. The struggle is real. We see the need to grow and do even better, and we bust our bottoms to do just that. I argue that the president should consider his own criticism. Why? He is mired in the mud of minority approval. Joining us now from Los Angeles, Anthony Scaramucci, the former White House communications chief and an informal Trump advisor. Welcome. And this question, what does the president gain by beating up on morning psycho Joe, uh, which he claims never to watch, uh, and other than allowing Scarborough and his team to kind of clap back and have some fun at the president's expense? Well, I think you saw it last night, Al. I mean, it was a vivid contrast. He's got a uh, record-breaking crowd out in Green Bay, and then you've got a lot of people looking to fill their seats at the White House Correspondents' Dinner. And so he's in a full-blown war with the media, uh, and I think they played into his hands in many ways. And so I think, actually, the president's winning that war. I mean, the, the Mueller report, uh, some of the stuff inside it is actually sour, but the top-line headline is very good for the president. And most of the American people have moved on. So uh, him tweaking the media like that, uh, I think it, it, it drives them into further hysteria, uh, which he, pl he plays very well to the base. You know, okay, I, I so talked to the in. president. Let, let me East jump in. Okay, you say you yeah. talked to the president. Go ahead. No, I, I talked to the president on Easter Sunday. And, you know, his, his thing is, is he, he, he's going to move very, very hard on the base. And the quote from the president was, the independents and the moderates will take care of themselves, meaning that the economy is very strong. The policies that he's put in place are working. They're very good common sense policies for the American people. And so his attitude is full bore on the base uh, and he'll he'll win the reelection uh, by galvanizing those people, plus some of the moderates and independents. Right. So but when he, the let strategy me jump, let me, does let, seem to be working. Let me jump in here. When he does go, when he personalizes it, Morning Psycho Joe going after Cuomo, when he calls Paul Krugman, I, New York Times columnist that does not like him, stupid, but the guy's a Nobel Prize winner. And when he tweets this, uh, Anthony, when the, the New York Times will have to get down on their knees and beg for forgiveness, uh, beg for forgiveness. You're, are you suggesting that he is doing this as a political tactic because his base loves it? Well, I think I think it's a combination of things. I think it's counterpunching, which he's done for 45 years. I think it was a successful political tactic in 2016, and so I think he's doubling down on that strategy for 2020. Um, I don't like elements of it. There's no question about that. When you when he's calling people names like that, you know, you know, he must like it. He gets sore at me for saying that I don't like it publicly, but I don't like it because I think at the end of the day. Uh, he has to win these suburban uh, women voters. He had 52 percent of the white women vote in 2016. He's got to get back to those levels again in 2020 to win. Uh, they don't like that kind of bullying. So he, he gets mad at people like me for calling him out on that. Uh, but the truth of the matter is how he, I want to see the guy win. He's had a very successful strategy for the American people. The economy is unbelievably strong right now. And it's, and it's deep, Howie, in terms of it's not just corporate CEOs and the stock market, it is deep. You're seeing I agree with real that. wage I agree with that. growth. But I want to stay on the press, and I want to play for you a uh, president's yes. interview. He phoned in to Sean Hannity's show, and Hannity asked him whether the president believes the media owe him an apology. Here's what happened. Well, they do owe me an, an apology, a big one. They owe you an apology. We actually had a, a lot of support. I mean, I, I watch you and Tucker, and I watch... Uh, uh, Laura and you great guys in the morning with Steve and, and Ainsley and Brian. 
Does it help or hurt Fox that while the president is going after much of the media, he is praising and, and, and online promoting uh, many of Fox's conservative opinion hosts? Well, I think Fox executives are concerned about it because they want to make sure that there's a separation, obviously, between the administration and, frankly, Fox. But I think in general it does help Fox because at the end of the day, uh, his support base is galvanized around Fox, and you can see it in your primetime ratings, and it's obviously reflected in the morning ratings. And so I do think from a ratings point of view it helps him. But I, I want to go back to what we were talking about earlier, the personal attacks on the press, uh, I think the president's strategy, he could be deploying the strategy and reducing the personal attacks on the press, and he would do better with a, a, a block of people that he's going to need to get to win re-election. And, and so on that point, he wants to re and on that yep. point, I, I want to quote you, yep. uh, a column that you wrote in The Hill, you said, the press, Mr. President, is not the enemy of the people. Uh, in many ways, you say the press is the savior of the republic. And look, you say the press is flawed, biased, self-righteous, sanctimonious, but is serving the, the, the purpose that the founders wanted. Clearly, you have not persuaded Donald Trump of this. No, I, I, and, and no one's going to persuade him, to be honest. But listen, I mean, I've been, I've been roiled in the press, lit up on late night comedy. Uh, I think yes, I've got have. pretty good standing to say that the press is not the enemy of the people. If you go back to the foundational principles of the republic, the press is there to keep, you know, people away from tyranny. The press is there to guard us from people in power and to, frankly, to hold them accountable. In addition to that, the free press makes our younger people very creative, Howie. If you can teach people to think freely in the second grade, they go on to create freely, and that's where all of our economic innovation one, comes from as one well. More, one uh, more, we're a big one, advantage to China related one, to that. One more quote from your piece. When the president rails about the press and suggests it is an enemy, he scares Americans. Are these people who you think he could potentially get to support him next year who are outside the uh, traditional base? Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think he needs to go that far. I mean, look, last night, symbolically, was a great night for the president. You've got the nerd prom, uh, nerd to the 26th power, and a lot of vacant seats, and he's got a packed house in Green Bay, Wisconsin. So the president is winning. You know, I would argue with the, the press to change strategies a little bit on the president. They're not going to apologize to him, but the president is an old-fashioned guy. He feels like that there's been too much bias against him, uh, and if they toned it down a little bit, I think they could bridge the impasse. I think you could get him to come back to the White House correspondence, and although he's never go gone to one as president, I was there with him and Bill Shine, you know, three or four years ago uh, at one of the Fox tables. But you know, here, if he if they calm it down, uh, they can rebuild that relationship with the president, and I think that would be a good thing for the president as he's going into 2020. I would so agree with you, but you'd I probably disagree with. My concern is that... He would that, probably disagree with all that, by the way. Yeah, he probably would. And my concern is that both sides are so dug in in what's become this war of words that it's difficult to change at this point. But always great to well, hear your true. viewpoint. Mooch, thanks very much. Good I to see you. I appreciate it. Thanks.